Hello there guys, Kirk and Jason here once more with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, I got a patch, uh, oh it's about 40 feet long. What I want to show you guys is, I had a guy who was always calling me and said, Kirk, how come you always use a color coat when you do a texture? I'll show you, Kevin, uh, this particular finish here. I'm going to scratch and brown this all right now, and I'm using a pull trowel, swimming pull trowel. We use these when we don't want any joints, when we used to do swimming pulls. This is flexible. If I use a square trowel, I could still get it in these corners here, but it doesn't flex much. This one does. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do a scratch and brown. Jay mixed me up some hot mud, and what that means is it has a accelerator in it. So I'm going to start here and work my way all the way. And all I'm doing now is just a scratch coat first. Then I'm going to come double it up and put another coat. And by the way, folks, Jay has informed me that we have a million viewer or a million people that have watched our videos now. I find that remarkable. I just want to say thank you to all those folks. He actually showed me something else too. I didn't know we were so worldwide doing this stuff. We have folks from every country watching these. That's, I just found that out. I find that amazing. Anyway, thank you folks. But getting back on the question from uh, this fellow who actually is in Italy. Um, unbelievable. That's pretty far away. He says, well, how come you always use the color coat? I'm going to show you because when we're done with the scratching brown, I'm going to show you what happens when you try to use this particular material to match a texture. I can use this particular material to match some textures, but not this particular one because this was at one time a color coat that has been painted. And when we get to that stage, I'll definitely show you folks because it is kind of interesting. All right, guys, we're at a stage where I am putting up our second coat. Uh, tip, this got a elastomeric paint on it because it leaks like a sieve in this apartment. So it, they had to, the folks who lived here, they had to leave until this gets fixed. As, as I'm doing my scratch coat, what I'll do generally is I'll push extremely hard. I'll push it up extremely hard and I'll get it in there real tight because I, that's when you're doing tie-ins like this and in case any of you folks haven't noticed by watching our videos I do complete homes but after 30 years of doing complete homes I, I don't mind just doing this little patch stuff so this little this joint here I'm using this pull trowel and I'm squeezing it as hard as I can under here under here getting it in there real real tight because in about oh 20 minutes this is going to be hard as a rock then I'll show you how we float it and get ready to do this particular texture and as I said I'm going to show you why we don't use this one all right guys this is just rod in the work the, the lines the serrated edge on here actually opens it and allows it to dry a little bit faster that's technical stuff that the average person would need to know I would also strongly suggest that if you're a homeowner and you're watching me do this, do the scratch coat, let it set 48 hours, then come back and do the brown coat. And the texture here actually takes a few years experience. So, I mean, I'm going to show you guys, but I don't expect people to pick up a hawk and trowel and do what I do. I make it look a lot easier because of 30 years and I enjoy doing this. All right, guys, I'm going to show you the, another step. Now that we got it on, I got it on a little full because I want to feather in now. Now I'm feathering in the joint. I'm using this hard rubber float. Feathering in the joint. I'm pulling it up, pulling it up. <laughs> Let's see here. And then I'm shaving it. I generally will shave it, what I call, to get it true and plumb. You can see this little bit of slobbers that are coming off. And that's what I want. And it's it's at a workable stage right here too. If I allow this to get white or to harden, either means the same thing. I'm going to be using muscle and strength rather than skill. Right now I'm relaxed and I haven't even broken a sweat. And that's the way I want to keep it, if I can. And I just keep shaving it, keep shaving it. And now it's becoming truer and truer, completely flat. So my next texture will, or for my final texture, I'll have a perfect finish rod, true and plumb. 
Uh, I just take this right here, pick it up, throw it back on the board. A lot of ways to do this, guys. This is just my way. Uh, after all my years' experience, I found that this is the best. And these guys, they are expecting me to match this. Larry says, hey, Kirk, you're going to match it perfectly? I said, I'll do as well as the next fella uh, as far as matching that texture. But if you want a perfect finish, you know my rules. We coat the entire front. This is the front of a building. We coat the entire front. There's no joints. But I can match this well enough where the average person won't notice it. All right, guys. I'm at a stage now where I'm going to show you why this this particular material here won't achieve the texture that they desire. I forget if it's Kevin from France or Italy, but one of those areas. Anyway, I'll show you now, Kevin, why this doesn't work. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, the, the stuff we put in the Portland cement it's either Felton sand, Ole sand, plaster sand, there's about 10 other names. And it's, it's a little heavier than this texture sand. This is 30. It's a, a 20, 30 or a regular 30. So here's, here's why this won't work. Good question, by the way. Okay, even if I put it on light. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna put this on somewhat light. Let's say I knock it down. If, this is way heavier, so when they paint this, it'll be noticeable. You know, some, they'll say, gee whiz, Kirk, you know that, that texture you put was way too heavier. And why? Because I tried to save some time and use this. I can use this on a lot of materials, but just not this. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I recommend. I'm going to scrape this off. Okay, scrape it off and start again. But this time with the proper material. And the proper material I'm using on this is it's a La Habra 2030. That's the technical name of it. And it's for a fine color coat finish. Jay already mixed me up some in the bucket here. That's about all I need. So what I'll do is I'll pull it out now. Let me get it out your way. Okay. Now I'm going to put it on the hawk here, and because I have, I just cleaned this hawk with water, it'll, it'll kind of slip slide all over the place, so I do this to level out the playing field so when I pull it off of here, it's not sliding too much. All right, now we start again. Now this particular material, Now I'm looking at what they've done. They're, they're right-handed plasters. Most guys are. They're coming upward like this. They're, they put their first one on here, then they're pulling it sideways. So I'll generally do something very similar to that. I'll pull it sideways. I'll start at the bottom here and pull it sideways. Sometimes I'll just take my trowel and put a couple sideways ones like I see there. They got a few sideways. And I could switch to a square trowel if I wish, but don't need to. I can, I can use this swimming pool trowel. Let me show you a little bit more what I'm referring to. And then I'm going to take it sideways because these guys went sideways. So just like that. Give me five minutes to take this whole wall and then I'll show you how we knock it down. Okay guys, we're almost done here. Another thing which um, fellas like me in the trade know, like the little bitty things, there's a lot of technical stuff here. And that is, I'm going over a hot wall. Even though we're in the shade today, it's a nice chilly day. I love these days right here for, for doing this. It's perfect. Uh, I'll show you something. Almost got this licked. And as soon as I finish this little skip trowel right here, a little bit sideways. Now I know what I'm waiting on. And what I'm waiting on over there is for it to be ready. Now I'll show you something else. This is the last, the last stage. All right, we're ready. I'm looking at this and I, I can look at it because I have a lot of time in. I know what I'm looking at where the fellow who did the color code originally 50 years ago, before it was painted, they, they put it on, they allowed it just a certain amount of time to dry. 
then they knocked it down. That determines whether or not these, the texture here is flat or has a little bit of ridges. So now I'm just barely hitting it, barely hitting it. I'm just, I'm holding it with here. I'm not holding it with my whole hand, just letting my finger lift it up. And as I lift it up, that gives me the, the finish. If I put, if I press it real hard, I can make it flatter, or if I just do it like so, that just takes a bit of practice, guys. You gotta know what you're looking at, and it takes a few years in the trade to learn this. Anyhow, guys, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera as usual, and also the fella who mixed all this for us. As usual, guys, we'll see you on the next one.